It's not, what is it, nine o'clock there? No, yes. It's eight o'clock. Eight o'clock, okay, I got that right. So it's, it's an absolute joy to meet you for several reasons. Um, Catherine, Rick have talked about you um, when this, when, when this uh, interview was announced, I got a message from Rick going, unbelievable, you're gonna go crazy. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Thank and uh, Catherine, the same thing. When, when I interviewed Catherine, uh, she said the same thing. And I did not realize that you were a contributor to the new book on facial aesthetics. That they yes. That's yes. amazing. Actually, Ricky invited me, and, and I also, uh, I'm part of, of, of his, uh, you know, a list of, of educators at PRFEDU. So, as you know, he organizes, uh, you know, four different facial aesthetic uh, courses uh, around U.S., Right. And I usually participate on two of them in, in Miami, uh, next to Catherine Davies, uh, Rick, and other international doctors. So, you know, uh, as a dentist, if you are like a uh, fan and you would like to, you know, you know start in the facial aesthetic uh, field, I really recommend to, to enroll uh, into one of these uh, courses because you learn a lot. Yeah. Not only about facial aesthetics, but Rick, he has a first module uh, that talks about biomaterials mm -hmm. and it's like absolutely amazing. Like you learn more in just one day than in three years at university. Uh, he's incredible. Actually, um, I don't know what's going to happen because of COVID, but he's got a course in the end of October, the beginning of November. So yeah. he said I could come, but he said I would have to just carry his briefcase. I'm not actually going to participate. I just yeah. have to carry his briefcase and move the books, but I can't sit in on the class. That's supposed to be funny. It didn't work. It's okay. However, but he's also apparently Catherine is, um, he, they're doing some, some videos apparently as well. They're going to do some work because obviously facial aesthetics, especially microneedling as Catherine was explaining to me, it all sounds so incredible. So we spent a few minutes before we started talking about what you've done. So first of all, happy birthday. I mean, I'm late, but happy birthday, okay, number one. Uh, and you're 26, which is killing me. I mean, it's killing, I'm looking at your CV and I'm sitting here going, no, no chance. And it's unbelievable. And you did some endodontic research, so I'm much happier now. Yeah. And we'll talk about your endodontic research in a bit. So I know what Miguel, Miguel's influence, and we'll talk about that in a second, he seems I would say he's your fairy godfather. I don't know if that. Yeah, it's like is, my godfather. He's exactly. Fairy godfather. I mean, yeah, like he's everybody's fairy godfather, but he's yours in particular. Yeah. Um, you you're originally from Lisbon, is that correct? You grew up uh, in Lisbon. Well, I'm I'm half uh, Portuguese, half Spanish. I was born in in Lisbon, but uh, my mother she's Spanish uh, from yeah. Madrid. And so I also always had like a Spanish education. I studied in an international school uh, okay. in Spanish. So, you know, I'm, I'm both, you know, I, I cannot say that I'm, you know, 100% Portuguese and 100% Spanish because actually my character, I think it's more like Spanish-like. So. Okay. So when you eat paella, it has sardines in it. Is that how that works? <laughs> Well, that's a good suggestion. Actually, you know, my uh, father, he has a, a, a restaurant. Does so he? I will, I will, yes. And, Mention and, that to him. Yes, you An must international come. dish. <laughs> so I will, I will let him know that it might, you know, uh, taste well. Let's see. Let's see. Yes, it's, it, but he has to call it the Sirota or something okay, crazy. Okay, I will. I have then, my own dish in Portugal. Yes. How amazing Can, is that? Paella. I, I will put that on the menu. <laughs> he didn't want to become a chef. You didn't want to? Really? Yeah. Well, actually, when I was uh, younger, uh, I usually like to, you know, to cook and, you know, try some, uh, do some experiments with, uh, with food. Uh, but right now, because I'm more dedicated to, to dentistry, uh, I don't have that much spare time. But, uh, you know, during, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, Easter or Christmas, my sister, she really, really loves to, to cook. So we like to cook together. And sometimes during weekend when she's here in Lisbon because she lives in Madrid, we like to cook and, and uh, try some recipes uh, together. So nice. yes, so I think I have it in the blood. <laughs> do you cater like to the, to the white clinic? There are 35 people. So do you make stuff for the white clinic for 35 people? 
free well, desserts, you know, well, lands and things like yes. that. Sometimes, you know, um, we before COVID, we used to do that. You know, sometimes, you know, really? one of, yes, one of the doctors bring, uh, you know, a cake. For example, today is your week, uh, you know, so nice. we usually, you know, like to do these things. But because of COVID uh, right now, we are not allowed to eat right. uh, at the clinic. So. so before we go on, I want to ask you a question. What's it like to work in the white clinic? Like, you know, uh, Charlie's Chocolate Factory, like you have oh, By the way, that's, that's brown, you know, where, okay. So, so Charlie's White Chocolate Factory. Exactly. Okay. So imagine like you have everything you can, you can't imagine, you can imagine, can't imagine, you have it here at the White Clinic. Um, you know, apart from having very good doctors uh, working here, not only as like technically, but like very good, um, honest and, yeah. you, know, you know, human doctors that really know how to take care of uh, patients. We have like amazing technology that, and, and protocols that, that complement, you know, all the service. So um, I learned a lot here, not only about technology and protocols, but actually how to become a, a good doctor and a good human being. Because, you know, dentistry is a very stressful um, profession. So sometimes, you know, you can be tired, you can be upset because, you know, not always patients are, are fair with you. And especially when you work in a private uh, practice that they ask a lot uh, uh, from you, you know. So they are very demanding and, you know, you need to be like relaxed, uh, know how to solve problems, uh, know how to please the patient. And uh, when you finish university, nobody, you know, teach you that. So uh, you need to learn uh, that with the experience. So I can say that, you know, uh, being here and, and having the possibility to learn with the other doctors of how to deal with these kind of situations, uh, it's it's I it's priceless. I, I I cannot say you know it's it's amazing. It's really amazing. Well, it's because Miguel is a movie star. Let's be honest. You yes. know he's the movie. He's the Hollywood dentist, but he's not actually in Hollywood. Yes. He's quite something. So I'm curious. There's what thirty five people in the in the in White Clinic. Thirty five or forty yes. people that work there. Yes, we are thirty five, but you know including its dental assistants, doctors. Uh, also the part of the reception, you know, the IT, everything. So how do you organize something like that? Like, there's like constant, it's like being in a football game. Yes, uh, actually, you know, uh, planification and logistic, it's something very important. Yes. Actually, I think we are, we might be the only clinic that we have actually doctors, dentists, that instead of working, uh, you know, as uh, dentists, you know, practically, they work on logistics. So that is very helpful because they really understand our mind. So they know exactly how to do like treatment plans and present it to, to patients right. uh, because they, they have the know-how. So it's not only presenting a bill, you're actually presenting the patient a solution and the procedure. And that's right. very important. And that cannot be done uh, you know, with a commercial or marketeer. It must be someone that has the specific knowledge and the study uh, to explain that. So we have, you know, these kind of, of, of doctors that work on that and organize our agenda and they can, you know, call patients and explain things. So that's something that uh, it really helps, uh, you know, our, our day to day. So, and, and they also, you know, give, you know, orders of, uh, you know, what we need to do. So, you know, I think that's something, you know, it's, it's key because I don't believe that many clinics have this kind of, of you know, staff. Like, no, yes. no. Has Miguel gotten you involved on your own part? I mean, you, you, you are a superstar already and you're sort of like your trajectory is going vertical very quickly. <laughs> um, Miguel has an, an enormous social media presence. Are you starting to do that as well to help yourself get going? Well, yes, actually, uh, I cannot say that I'm, I'm, you know, in the part of, of movie star because, you know, it's coming, it's okay. Yes. 
he gives a lot of, of, of lectures and you know that's that gives you a lot of lots of visibility but uh, you know I'm starting to have a lot of uh, patients that follow me and then they recommend to other uh, nice. people and they start following and following my work so uh, I can say that I'm constantly receiving messages from people interested in our work or even sometimes, you know, young doctors that, uh, you know, start seeing you as an inspiration. So for me, I, I don't have like words to describe that. Like for me, it's, it's surprising, uh, but I, I get really happy to, you know, to receive some compliments from other doctors about the work I post. So yeah, sometimes it's like, it's like unbelievable because I think the things I do, they are like, you know, current things, you know, normal, but, uh, you know, in other parts of the world, they found it amazing. So I, I love social media because of that, because, you know, uh, you have people that uh, appreciate your work. And at, at the end of the day, that's very good. Also, not only for your ego, but also to give you, you know, the fuel and the energy to continue, you know, right. working on that. So, you it's know, exciting. Do you want yeah. a lecture? Do you want to lecture all around the world like Miguel does? Well, I would love to. <laughs> I, I hope, you know, this COVID situation ends soon because uh, actually for this year, I, I had some uh, lectures uh, uh, around Europe, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, they have been canceled because of this. But of course, like I, I love being in, you know, I don't have any problem you know in talking in, in public of course i i still have some things to learn uh but uh you know i don't mind like i really love to go and share uh what what i what we do here at the white clinic and also conferences they they are very good because you 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 create new uh you know contacts uh with other doctors and you end up meeting other mentors which is very good mm -hmm. So yes, I, I hope back. we can start soon. It'll come back. <laughs> like the circuit, yes. But before we go, I want you to put up your email address. So anybody who wants to reach you, they can get in touch with you. They will put it okay. up at the end of the presentation, of course. And I, and I can tell that I'm the kind of person that answers. Like, I don't mind. I can say until uh, late, you know, at night, but I always love to answer people because, you know, they, deserve you know my my respect so uh you know don't worry maybe i don't answer today but tomorrow for sure <laughs> i said, will do it you said something very interesting i mean it's um you young dentists call you and talk yeah. about your work so you're yeah. 26 how young can they be what are they in their teens um, Yes, maybe some, some of them they are you know at, still at university others they are you know older but they are are still young. I consider you know, a young dance, it's about, you know, their 30s, you know, 20s. So, yes, yeah, like, especially, you know, on the facial aesthetic world, there are yes. a lot of dentists that they, they want to start yes. uh, to do this. Because, you know, the facial aesthetic market, it's something that it's growing, yes. but not the, you know, the massive surgeries. I'm talking about the minimal invasive things and especially the regenerative field not only in facial but also you know in medicine you know uh maybe one day we will have like a specific pill for you know everybody a specific uh paracetamol that will you know remove your, your, yes, your pain but without damaging your system uh because it's specific for you so you know medicine is working on that and and yes it's it's actually what what i think that more and more uh, you know dentists and doctors they are investing in, in this kind of regenerative field so that's why uh, you know i found prf and photobiomodulation therapy that it's something that uh, we might might talk about it later but uh, you know these concepts it's something that um, they are not not harmful uh, and it's something that uh, you can really get. Oh, Miguel, come, because Miguel is here. There he is, the rock star. Yes. 
We gotta How you doing? social distancing here. Social distancing. Don't yeah, don't set a bad example, my friend. Just stay back. Get your mask on. Uh, we both we've both been tested, so but we still do. Uh, we're fanatics here. So how you guys doing? How you doing? Doing great. We were just about to talk about the fact that Anna Miguel is your godfather because he met you when in, while you were in dental school. The two of you. Yes, connected. when I was in my third grade. I, Anna Anna's has a, had a family friend that was my patient that said, "Look, we, I've got this young uh, dental student, and I always like to help the students." But basically, the funny thing is, is Anna, I, you know, I did these TV shows, yeah, so... When oh, that's she, when you saw him. That's how you connected with him. When she was in high school. She saw my TV show, and that inspired her to become a dentist. Lovely. So now, are you doing TV shows now with him? Are you, like, are you both together on TV shows? N not, not yet, but... Not before. yet. <laughs> well, you... You were in the National Geographic a bit. Yes. Yeah, yes. she was in National Geographic, uh, the documentary a little bit. So, but you know what? It's, um, um, Anna is so busy that I would say that whatever you see online from her is probably 5% of what she actually does. You know, we're busy. <laughs> we got a lot yeah, of work. I mean, I've been looking at her CV. A couple of things I want to ask you in particular is forensic medicine. What what okay. can prompt you? I gotta go. You. Okay, say hi to your family. You be right. well. And just to be absolutely clear, Anna is a um, how can I say? She, she it's really weird. Her department basically helps improve the patient's journey from a biological perspective. Yes, yes, I can so see that. So much more than just dentistry so you know we have a big team yeah. and his job is improving the patient's immune system through biology and technology and what we like to call and we've actually called it it's called accelerated wound healing protocols okay and right you have a protocol right you have your own protocol yes never seen anything like it game-changing stuff i have to talk to you anyway later i'll email you okay He's everywhere. He's just everywhere, right? Everywhere. He's like God everywhere. He's like, yeah, he just appears. Like suddenly there's this puff of smoke and there's Miguel. So uh, forensic medicine, I, I mean, given what you do, like it seems all, you're, you're all about life, rejuvenation, whatnot, yeah. but you're studying forensic medicine. I mean, that's a bit antithetical, isn't it? Well, I'm going to explain why I, I did okay. it. Actually, uh, my grandfather, uh, he was part of the police. And so uh, I always had, you know, some of the stories, you know, I heard I, when I was, you know, uh, at high school, I enjoyed watching CSI, CSI Miami and those guys. Did you? <laughs> yes. That was the guy who took his glasses off, right? Yes. David Caruso or something. Exactly. Glasses, right? <laughs> We're yes. on. So, so I, I just, you know, um, enrolled the course and they accepted me and and I, I did it, you know, in in Madrid, and you know, it was you know, just to get some some knowledge about uh, forensic medicine because you know, actually, what we learned at dental school, uh, it was not enough. And, you know, there are amazing things that, you know, you know, dentists, they can contribute in, in forensic medicine. There are a lot of things that, that uh, we can do. Actually, you know, you can burn a, a teeth and, you know, from, you know, from the hashes, you can detect the, the DNA. So it's, yeah, like, right, right. it's amazing. So, you know, dentists, uh, we can also uh, contribute and, and, and be part of, of, you know, of the police, uh, um, environment and you know it's not only you know a dentist can be so many things you don't need to be you know working in a clinic or in a hospital uh -huh. you can also help in in other ways and you know that's why i wanted you know just to for curiosity to to try uh, something different you know <laughs> you, for curiosity <laughs> Yes. For well, curiosity, know, you know. went to ESERP, which is one of the most incredible universities. It has this vast array of master's degrees and business administration. That's an amazing university that you went, or like the facility where you went to do criminology. But I did have one question. Did they give you a badge when you finished the course? No, no, Like no, a no, star no. or anything like no, that? No, no, no. To say, no, you're, no. To say you're a sheriff? 
Nothing like that. No, eh? no you don't receive that. But uh, you know, they they have my contacts and they can you know call me uh, you know for for some kind of work. And actually, you are it's you can get you know a very good payment out of it. But I I don't have time to to do it. I don't um, think so. I don't yes. think so. And one of the things is, you know, it's it's movies and what you see in movies and uh, in series and and you know and stories and what you you know you you study and other thing is real life. It's completely different. So then okay. I realized it was something that I I didn't want to 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 do in in my life. So. so you mean you can't get DNA back in an hour and a half like they do in the show? You know, you get the DNA back in fifteen minutes and you solve the crime. It's not possible. It's not eh? like that. It's not like that. It's way much more complicated. Yes. And sometimes risky. So and sometimes risky. Yes. Now you were the head of scientific research and develop and, and development in the department. What is the, what does Miguel do? He runs his own science lab. Is that what's going on in the White Planet? So actually, what we do is we we establish several collaborations with uh, different uh, professors and universities. Uh, for example, um, we are actually collaborating with uh, Rick Myron uh, on PRF. And as you know, we have uh, some chapters in his uh, PRF uh, book. Uh, also, we are using his uh, system and documenting all the cases. So we can actually contribute on that. Also, we do research on, on vitamin D, uh, you know, uh, mm -hmm. because as you know, vitamin D is very important for bone remodeling and actually to improve the patient's immune system. So we have done a study on that. I hope soon we, we will have the publication. It will be a very interesting study because we will not only talk about vitamin D and, you know, the intake of supplements before surgery, uh, but we will also talk about, you know, the comparison between, uh, you know, some devices that you can have at the office and how accurate they can be compared to, to the lab. So you can test the vitamin D with just a prick in your finger at the office. So there's no excuse, you know, to, you know, for the patient to say, well, I don't know my vitamin D levels because I don't have time to go to a lab. Actually, you can do it at the office and it's something that will take you just 10 to 15 minutes and it's very easy to do. So and Sorry, go ahead. I, I interrupt. I'm just thinking out loud. You, you're suggesting that vitamin D will be part of the protocol for doing implant dentistry? Absolutely. Really? Absolutely. Look, at, uh, when, when we do surgery, uh, you know, before, you know, doing the implants or removing the tooth, etc., you know, I always measure blood pressure, uh, the vitamin D levels, and I work on, on medication uh, for the patient. You know, it's like you have a, a, you know, a pre-surgical appointment. It's something that uh, I call it. So sometimes, you know, if the patient, uh, you know, comes to the clinic, we present a treatment plan. I do, you know, I test the vitamin D and the antioxidant level that it's something that we also uh, test. And if the patient has low levels, I will give supplements to increase. If I see, you know, in a surgery, you know, the patient comes for, for an emergency to extract a tooth or, and to pu put an immediate implant, you know, you test the vitamin D and it's low and then antioxidants. What I do is because the patient doesn't have time to take supplements, you know, because he wants to do it immediately. Right. I give like shots of vitamins intravenously oh. and also, you know, an injection of a high doses of vitamin D of course, depending on the patient's uh, vitamin D levels, uh, because we also have like established protocol for that. If someone is interested, I can, I can send it to you sure. because it would be very helpful. But I always raise the vitamin D uh, levels uh, in my patients. That's and we amazing. have never any kind of, of complication. I can tell you that uh, our successful uh, rate is very, very high. So I'm curious, your vitamin D is being recommended for people who have COVID, like obviously vitamin D increase, antioxidants. Um, I, I made a list one day, things like elderberry or something. Like exactly. Anything that's an antioxidant in addition to vitamin D seems to be improving COVID. Exactly. Yes, absolutely. And, yes. Well, they said it was because uh, with COVID, they're seeing uh, heart problems. They're seeing potentially long-term neurologic deficits. Yes. So, 
and there's and there's and there's a reason you know uh because this is this has always to do with uh um stress into the cells if your uh, cells are stressed they are not able to regenerate so that will compromise your whole system uh for example um one of the basic things that you need to tell your patients is that you know after a surgery uh, they need to relax and i know that you know it's something that you know people they might it sounds crazy but it's very important that you have your parasympathetic system active because you know you have the sympathetic system that is the one that actually right now we are using because we are yes. talking you know yes. we are concentrated on something and when we are under this system uh, we are stressed so our cells they are not able to regenerate right. and when you are relaxed watching a movie you know you your parasympathetic system is activated and you know that level it's very important so it's the only way you know your cells are able to regenerate so you know stress into cells it's it's no good so that's why you know antioxidants also you know improve the you know the the cellular stress so they are less stressed so they are able to regenerate so these kind of things they are very important you know that doctors not only dentists doctors they have in mind because they will really improve the success rate of the surgeries. And it's something that they don't teach us at university. No, at all. no. I've never had, you know, a nutrition uh, subject at university. I don't know no. if in America or in, or in Canada you have it, but nobody taught us these things. So, you know, this is a very important component to be successful, especially in surgery or any kind of, of other dental treatment. This is fascinating. I mean, if you think about it, um, one of the worst things that we can do is like cortisol they, uh, come up. Exactly. So cortisol and implant surgery, if your cortisol levels are high, you mm -hmm. would have to wonder whether or not it was having a damaging effect on the, uh, the osseo healing, and osseo integration, biological healing. Um, there is an interview on Monday, I think, with a woman named Sally Safa, who mm -hmm. is a dentist here in Toronto. But her, um, she initially started doing work with dentists, mindfulness, um, you know, just basically being grounded, uh, you know, dealing with stressors in your life as a dentist, right? Absolutely, absolutely. However, that is, it's something that people don't do with their patients. Yeah. And, I, you know, we do a medical, dental, but we don't really do a psychological evaluation. Now, I'm not suggesting we be psychiatrists or psychotherapists, but dentistry is high stress at the best of times. So all of these features, all these factors, the nutrition, the psychology of dealing with the stress in a dental office, it's, it's quite fascinating that that's the approach that you've been taking. That is biological dentistry, correct? That's pretty it's much what it is. Correct, correct, you know, because uh, also, you know, when you are asking your patient uh, that you are going to give a medication or a supplement, you know, so, you know, you cannot give any kind of medication or any kind of, of uh, supplement because, you know, Patients, they are completely different from each other. So something that can make, you know, something good to you, it can be harmful to me. So you really need to test these things, uh, you know, before you give to your patients. And what I practice, uh, you know, as a dentist, and it's something that I really advise that, you know, uh, if you want to become uh, like a biological practitioner, you should, um, you know, try to take a course on art testing, that it's autonomous response testing. I don't yeah. know if you ever heard about this. Uh, actually, who, who invented this technique was uh, Dr. Cleanheart. He's not a dentist, he's a, a doctor, and he's the father or, of biological medicine. So he has a very accurate uh, test and he has some uh, publications already, uh, you know, in PubMed, you can uh, research about art that you can test the patient's allergies, which is very beneficial. So you can see if the patient is allergic to titanium or to ceramic uh, on the same appointment by muscle uh, testing and kinesiology. And it's very accurate. Also, you can test the, um, the anesthetic that it's very important, you know. You know, I don't know if you have that problem or you have ever had that problem, but some patients, they are allergic to articaine or yes. to any other kind of, of anesthetic and they don't know. Right. So 
thanks to this test, you can actually know on the same appointment uh, about that. And, you know, also, you know, test medication, supplements, and, you know, and you can create like something particular for that patient that you are treating. It's not, you know, something, yes, let's give, you know, this supplement to everybody because this raises the vitamin D. It's not exactly like that. You know, in some specific cases, you need to be uh, more individual and, and give something that, that it's not harmful for that patient it's, and it's more, you know, uh, particular uh, uh, for them. So actually, I really advise at least go through the internet, try to, you know, uh, understand more about it because it's not only beneficial for your dental practice, but actually also for your daily life. So, and you can test also, you know, uh, intensification with uh, metals, you know, aluminum, mercury. So this test you can, with that, and it's, you know, it's something that it's, it's cheap. You don't need to, you know, buy a machine to do that. You know, it's just, you know, knowledge and, and practice. And it's, you can really improve uh, um, your patient's uh, treatment yeah. with that. So every so, patient, you do a V, obviously you're going to do a PRF, you do a venipuncture, but you do, you take blood with every patient and you do this evaluation and analysis, is that correct? Yes, well, um, the art testing doesn't consist uh, on drawing blood. It's a more like kind of kinesiology test, muscle testing test, energetical test. Um, I know that it sounds like a little bit awkward, but... Uh, once uh, you start, you know, learning about that, because it always has to do with uh, physics and electromagnetic mm -hmm. uh, ways. And once you understand the concept, you can really apply it into your practice. It's very difficult to explain. You really need to attend to one of these courses to understand, uh, you know, the theory and the practice. But you know, I just invite you to, you know, just um, Google art testing from Dr. Cleanheart and read right. more about it and attend one of his courses. He has plenty uh, online of online courses. So just go there and, and, and do some research about it. So this, I, you, do, you do this in your spare time, of course. This is when you have nothing right. else to do. Yes. <laughs> I'm always but, learning. I, I can tell, like, I, I went to, you know, to Switzerland, to Germany, also to London, uh, and I really follow Clean Heart. He also has uh, courses in Seattle because he's not all the time in, in Europe. He also lives in, in Seattle. So uh, he has, you know, uh, some courses uh, in the United States. And if you are interested, you know, just yeah. go there because you will learn a lot, not only, you know, about the test how, and how to do the test, but a lot about biological medicine and how to improve uh, your patient's health. It's, it's very, very interesting. Well, you do something else. It's interesting. You, you're, you were doing, and in Zurich, you were doing biologic dentistry and ceramic implants. Yes. But you were also using um, soft, soft tissue lasers, soft lasers and PRF. Yes. Disin so is this all tied together? PRP yes. disinfection, soft tissue lasers, nutritional considerations, customizing, customizing what it is you provide the patient to facilitate or accelerate healing. Exactly. Is this all tied together? Is that how you do it in terms yes. of the So what we have here and what we call here at the White Clinic, it's a, uh, you know, a protocol that is called advanced wound healing. So that consists in a combination of concepts and technology that will improve the success of, uh, of the surgical uh, procedures. Right. So the first thing that we do, it's blood tests and this art test to, you know, test, you know, our patient's um, uh, blood levels. And then, you know, depending on the, on the level, we will, you know, give, you know, supplements or we will do some kind of recommendations or change the, the patient's diet. So, you know, you can, at, at the same time, he can improve his immune system. So when he does surgery, he will be, you know, with the right energy to do it. Right. And then uh, after that, of course, you know, during surgery, we need to take PRF. And of course, if you have improved your patient's blood levels, the PRF will be, you know, with a higher quality. Yes. So 
that's the reason you cannot you know you cannot have the same effect and there's no study about it we need to do something like that rick if you are online what's rick, are you there pay attention rick yes we need to those out of the books yeah. boy exactly so uh actually you you cannot have the same result with a patient that you know has a bad diet actually you can even see when when you draw blood and you do the centrifugation you can actually see the quality of the blood, you know, really? from a healthy patient and someone that it's, it's ill. And another thing that I have been noticing, and it's like, this is confidential, but I, I'm going to- <laughs> Whisper it, whisper it in my ear. It's that, uh, you know, while we are doing, because here at the White Clinic, we do, um, you know, very complex uh, cavitation surgeries. You know, a cavitation mm -hmm. is an infection in the bone. So we remove like big cysts, and, you know, when I do this kind of surgery, sometimes it's like uh, the two, you know, maxilla and mandible. So the first thing I do is like, I have, you know, the patient with the IV. I draw, you know, uh, blood, you know, I harvest, harvest some blood. Then I do the PRF and you see like the color is not good. And then, you know, you place the PRF into, you know, the maxilla. And then Miguel, he says, okay, so right now, you know, let's, let's do a pause. You can draw some blood. And then let's do it in the mandible. Because we remove the cysts, because you know the patient has already all the vitamins into the system, right. the color of the PRF is completely different really? from the previous one. Huh. So you can see that when you remove the infection, you know, from the patient's uh, body, and also you give you this boost of vitamins, actually the quality of the PRF is immediately uh, boosted. So, I, you know, I invite you to try this uh, in your office because you'll really understand. You know, when you remove an infection from the patient's mouth, like you are doing not a dental treatment, but an immune treatment because yes, you're exactly. really improving the immune system of the patient. Right. And, you know, most of the people, you know, uh, they think, okay, it's just, they are just teeth. It's just the mouth. But if they have like a lesion, you know, in the hand or in the arm or in the leg, they will give m much more uh, importance. And, you know, actually, you know, teeth, they are so, so important because, well, and this is like, like more into the, if you see into the holistic approach, but there's a map of, uh, I can show this to you. I always show this to my patients. I don't know if you can see it, yes. but you know, each teeth is related to an organ. To an organ system. Wow. So actually what I do at the office at the first, you know, and f first time, you know, when they come for the first appointment, you know, some, some of them, they have like an injury in the arm. They have done, you know, a lot of physiotherapy. And, you know, before I look into the CVCT, I say, okay, so this patient will have like a problem in, well, your number of teeth is different, but, you know, these uh, kind of lesions, they are usually related to premolars, upper yeah. premolars. So then if you see into the CVCT, you will see that the patient has a cyst over there. So the way I explain to my patients that, you know, that infection is affecting the shoulder, because some of them say, oh, like you're, this doctor is completely crazy because she's telling me that my cyst over here is affecting my shoulder. So what I do is that you can inject like an anesthetic mm -hmm. uh, that it's called procaine. Yes. And it's not actually like an anesthetic because it only lasts 30 minutes, but it yeah, will sure. last you know, at least eight hours in your body. Yeah. And can, you can inject, inject procaine and, you know, this injection will start, you know, you will start uh, feeling the effects after 10 to 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. So I usually, what I do is like I record patients, you know, trying to, you know, put their hands up and they can't. And then after doing the procaine injection, you know, they can really feel a relief. Oh. So, you know, these kind of tools really help in your practice to explain, you know, to your patients uh, the way, you know, that uh, cyst is affecting your body. It's so. interesting because you, 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 we'll talk about the endodontic research that you did. Endodontics were amazing. So uh, which is, I had a talk with uh, Marcus 
Twaishler. I called yeah. him Victoria's dad because I can't pronounce him Latin, his last name. But we had the same discussion. He was saying endodontists and periodontists are gods because keeping teeth is pivotal. Because yeah. everything that goes on in the mouth um, has, a, has a somatic effect. Okay, yeah. It has a systemic response. It has a somatic effect. And he's right because, um, you know, in endodontics, everything, well, get rid of the apical periodontitis. Mm -hmm. So it comes back. Okay, mm -hmm. endodontics doesn't always heal. So then we get into the business about, well, the yeah. sealer, the bioceramic, the gutta percha, whatever. But they don't address it's the a rubber dam that it's very important, you know. Fortunately, they have to use a rubber dam in North America, otherwise it's illegal. If you swallow a file, that's the end of your life. However, what what is really not discussed is the immune response. I mean, there are people who look at it on a holistic level, mm -hmm. but it's like comorbidities with COVID patients. I mean, how many people in North America have heart disease, a history of oncologic problems, diabetes, kidney problems, and, and you want to know why the root canals don't work because exactly. it's a point of sepsis, but we're like, what you're doing is fascinating because granted, if the patient has diabetes, you're not going to alter your diabetes with using uh, pharmaceuticals and supplements and such. But they don't address the immune response. You don't treat a diabetic for endodontics with an, with an antibiotic. It's not enough. Yes. And there are people here in Toronto that are working on that in terms of uh, chitis and nanoparticles and such. But what's fascinating in terms of what you're doing, and, and the question I have is, your work and uses PRP, not PR PRF or PRP? Because the PRF, new PRF, PRF. Like, okay, because your original where was it? You originally started off. Was it PRP or did I get it? Yes. Uh, no, sorry. The past protocol that you're doing. Now, what, yes. This is your own protocol right now. You've yes. developed a protocol for regenerative dentistry, facial aesthetics, PRF, photobiomodulation. And so you've put this all together in a package, sort of. It's not a nice way to describe it. But it's a Cartier box with a bow. Um, but what is the past protocol? So actually, like, it was not me that developed it, you know, it was, you know, Dr. Miguel, he called it Paz because he like, likes my name because it means peace. Ah. And for me, like, it's, it's, an, it's an honor to have a protocol that has my name. But actually, I can tell that this was a work from, you know, many other collaborators, you know. Uh, I can uh, ha need to give like a, a huge shout out to um, Professor Sharan Ganati because uh, he's one of the leading doctors uh, on on PRF. Uh, I'm not saying you know in the in the dental part, but uh, you know in in facial uh, because he does like massive uh, surgeries, you know maxillofacial surgeries, uh, you know patients that have like a head and neck cancer, and he uses PRF. Uh, for a generation so you know you cannot only see like yes PRF you can use it for facial aesthetics and make you look yeah, beautiful and without wrinkles and acne yes but you know you can need you also need to see that uh, you can use PRF also to uh, reconstruct the, the face and uh, for example one of uh, my research uh, at, at Frankfurt University is that you know it's it's recovering patients from from cancer surgeries mm -hmm. uh, or even accidents you know they have like a car accident and the face is completely destroyed or sometimes some facial procedures that went wrong with hyaluronic acid and botox we treat that with prf and it's very interesting actually like i have a case that i like for me it's uh, it's i love it because the fact is that before uh, I, I started doing the research, there was a patient that he has like a tumor uh, in his brain and they removed the tumor, but then he had like a big uh, injury that it was not closing. Mm -hmm. And that can lead to infection and the patient, well, he was old and he could die. And I remember uh, he was one of my first patients and I applied PRF with photobiomodulation therapy. And, you know, and the wound is completely closed. And like I felt, okay, I really saved this patient's life because, you know, in the private office, you, you cannot notice that because, well, with biological dentists, yes, you can really improve the immune system of the patient. Um, okay, the patient is happy, feels good, feels beautiful. 
but at the hospital you really see these kind of problems that you know just the fact that you use prf combined with the light that it's actually what we call pass protocol because uh we were the first first ones combining uh you know the atp38 technology that it's a completely different kind of llt laser i i can explain that in a bit because sure. yes there were people using llts but atp38 it's something it's next level it's completely different and you know the comp just the fact of combining these two things you could really save this patient life because he could die uh, of of infection and you know it's thanks to these kind of things that you really see that you are making a difference you know it's not just not doing research like you are saving patients You're saving patients lives yeah. dr Gennady is in frankfurt and you're doing work there with him and this is what you're talking about reconstruction of the max location yes, right? yes. Uh, it's facial aesthetics but it's not like facial to make people you know that are beautiful even more beautiful it's like these cases that are are tragic you know mm. and and you combine these these two concepts and we can see that there are uh huge improvements with that do you do this with uh, with uh, catherine are you, she does similar work lasers and all of yes. this reconstructive work people who have been severely traumatized acid burns and things yes. like that we we are not uh working not uh, together i don't know why not but yes catherine if you are watching we can there do you go together. there you go i i need to bring you an atp to south africa and we can do something together but yes the the thing is that um, the past protocol is doing, uh, it's what we are doing with it, it's doing minimal invasive uh, regenerative therapies without the need, you know, of doing surgery or some aggressive lasers that, you know, sometimes the recovery, it takes long. And with this concept, actually what we want to do is not having like a downtime after treatment. Okay. So the patients, they do a rejuvenation treatment and, you know, in one day they are perfect. So, so that's okay. the objective. So, so uh, the machine that I see that patient sits in, it's like, it looks like, a, looks like they're inside a mirror, right? right. Like, you know, a, when you go into a clothing store, you look at yourself from different angles. Yeah. The same thing, flat face, two wings yeah. on it. That's a mm -hmm. soft laser? Is that what that is? Yes. So the difference between... Uh, yeah. Kind, it's a kind of LLLT. LL, okay. uh, it works with LEDs, but uh, at the end of the LED, and this is patented, and that's uh, ATP38 is the only machine that has it. Um, and that's why it's so expensive yeah. compared to the Amazon LEDs that you can see. Okay. Uh, it has like a kind of uh, semi collimator that it will collide the, um, the light. So instead of being dispersed, it mm -hmm. will go like a, a laser beam. Okay. So uh, then this uh, LED, the ATP38, combines different kind of wavelengths, like about seven different types. And you have like all the programs preset depending on the treatment you want to do. Imagine uh, you want to do like a post-operatory program that is healing, uh, you know, uh, also for as a, act as a painkiller and to diminish the inflammation. So that program will last, imagine, 12 minutes and it will combine different kind of lights in the same program. Then you have like a specific program for facial aesthetics for wrinkles, another specific program for acne to kill the bacteria of acne. So really? you know, this machine, um, like it worth, you know, the $20,000 that it can cost because you don't need to like even your assistant can um do it uh, mm -hmm. because it's very easy because all the programs are already okay. right. uh, with the right frequency so there's no kind of uh, adverse effects uh after using it and and you can really see an improvement if you do several uh uh type of of, of treatments it's like going to a hyperbaric chamber if sure. I don't know if you've ever ever gone to one, no. but like you will not get results with just one treatment. You need to do like uh, many sessions. So you know, actually, what the light will do, it will act on the cell in the mitochondrial level. So you know that the cells they have these molecules that are the ADP, that yeah. are the uh, you know energetical molecules. So 
thanks to the, the light, you know that during the Krebs cycle, you usually fabricate 38 ATPs, but then you lose two, so you end up with just 36. So with this machine, you end up recovering those two ATPs that you lost. So that's why it's called ATP 38. That's uh, <laughs> the name of the machine. So thanks to, you know, thanks to the energy that you, you give to the cells, all the cellular processes, they happen to uh, be faster. So that's why you get that uh, painkiller effect, the healing effect, the anti-inflammatory effect. Um, so that's the main thing. I never thought I would have to do biochemistry again. Krebs cycle and adenosine triphosphate. Like that's 40 years ago for me. My goodness. Right. So I want to talk about some of your research, if I could, Anna. You've been involved in a lot. First of all, you know Valerie Cantor, which excites me. You know, you did some work with Valerie. Uh, well, I, have I, think, I don't know her personally. Oh, you don't know her personally? No, but I know her work, of course, and we have a, a, a book chapter on fighting yes. together. Uh, I know she's a, an endodontist. Yes. And she's like, I, I love the way she practices endodontics because uh, she uses lasers yep. um, and, she, you know, and also bioceramics. Mm -hmm. uh, I have been following uh, her work, and I think that's the right way of practice and the uh, I, For me, it's like a pity that uh, at least here in Portugal, uh, we don't have doctors that work like that. Um, well, here at the White Clinic, of course, we are working like that. We have the lasers, the air gag laser. Um, the bioceramics uh, too for a, a kind of obturation material. But what I wanted to say is that there are no many, not many dentists that, that work like that. And I think she's completely right. Uh, and, and I like her, her approach. She is. Laser, uh, there are very few dentists in, and in honest in North America. The one that is sort of known for it is a gentleman named Justin Coleman. Mm -hmm. But lasers have been very poo-pooed, ended on in North America. Yeah. Initially, it was kind of like, forget about it. But it's, it's sort of beginning to come back. People appreciate the value that it brings, especially yeah. as the fiber optics have improved and the wavelengths have changed. But she was actually doing um, PRF for surgery, but she was using it as a scaffold in regenerative end and Yes. And that's what I think she worked on with Rick, which is pretty yes. amazing, actually. Yes, I remember one of our first chats, uh, one of my first chats with, with Rick was about Valerie Cantor, because I remember when I met him, it was the time when I finished my research on bioceramics applied into endodontics. Right. And, and he told me about uh, uh, Valerie work and also about placing a PRF for uh, pulp capping. Yes. So, yes. Um, you know, I, I found that very, very uh, interesting. And uh, yes, like, I, I think that, you know, it's, it's time that some universities, I know that in LA they already practice, yes. but some universities, at least he, uh, here in Europe, also start using this, this approach. We need to bring Valerie Cantor here. Yeah, you know, she's been... Europe. I'm trying to remember her email and Rick told me one time, I tried to reach her a couple of times, very busy lady, but she's actually very logical if you think about it. Regenerative ended on it. I, 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 you, I'm sorry? I, I, I have watched uh, some of her inter and interviews and I really like the way she explains things. Like uh, she's very, very knowledgeable. So it's, uh, it's amazing, yes. I would be curious to speak to her because the, the, if you look at the Journal of Endodontics today, everything is large segments now. Everybody's recognizing that regenerative REP, regenerative endodontic procedures, Regendo. Um, yeah. It's still, it's not perfect yet, but it's still capable of uh, in immature teeth, certainly regenerating whether or not you're getting purely vascular, true, true formation, or it's osteogenic, osteodentoid, whatever. But the point is that there's definitely an indication for it, and she's at the forefront, be it yeah. pulpotomy, pulpotomy, be it regeneration. I mean, we've been running around chasing down with materials, calcium hydroxide, now we have bioceramics, biodent, and whatever. But I think what she's doing is as typical there. We're not growing bone. It's not like you're assuming you're growing bone, you're facilitating the reduction of inflammation and tissue. So what she's yeah. doing is amazing. It just hasn't, remember, North America, it's market drive science, not the other way around. 
Yes. So it would obviously take time because it eliminates a very large amount of the product being sold. I know, I know. So I, I guess you have to look at thing like in surgery, it's the same thing. So it's uh what's interesting. So I was gonna tell you, you said before you did your research on post treatment pain using biosoramics in age twenty six. Yes. Cryotherapy in endodontics. You have a chance to some papers by uh, Jorge Vera and by Philippe Schliemann. They use saline. They just put saline in the in the fr in the fridge. It stays cold for whatever. And if you irrigate with the same the cold saline out yeah. before you obturate, mm -hmm. post treatment pain diminishes dramatically. So wow. They call it endodontic cryotherapy. And there's I think there was just a publication in the JOE I read. Anyway, there's a number of publications. Let's look up cryotherapy for endodontics. So Sleeman and Vera are the two that really kind of brought it forward. But I think it's going to be very much a part of what post-operative pain elimination in endodontics. So you can have that if you want. You can use that technique and you can call it the, the anapause post-treatment pain endodontic protocol. There we go. So that's a great suggestion. There you are. Well, you get another thing to your name. Uh, Miguel will tell you how to trademark it. So it's all really good. Okay. So here's the thing that I did want to talk about. A couple of things. So vitamin D fascinated me. I didn't know where you were, I didn't know what that was about, particularly since they're now addressing it in terms of comorbidities and such. Before I want to do this, though, I have a question. I don't know very much about lasers. I never really use them, short of soft tissue lasers. I wanted to do a little gingivectomy around an antidotic tree to the two what are the six different wavelengths in lasers? There are supposedly six different wavelengths, the, er, the, the uh, YAG lasers, the erbium lasers. Yes. What, what's the difference? It's like, what are the application? You're using a soft laser, yes. and, but you would never be able to use anything else than a soft laser for facial rejuvenation, right? Well, <clears throat> yeah. Actually, we also use um, air YAG laser at the mm -hmm. clinic. Air YAG laser, it's more aggressive compared mm -hmm. to, you know, what we call soft laser. But, you know, I found uh, it's wrong to call like ATP38 and these um, uh, LEDs uh, or soft lasers, lasers. Mm -hmm. I think they should be called LED because the way the, the light is emitted, it's completely different from a laser. Right. But both of them do something similar. For example, an air gag laser, uh, if you are doing like tissue disinfection in a surgery, it will kill uh, the bacteria because it will do like ablation of the bacteria. Right. But at the same time, it will um, do a kind of photobiomodulation. So it will also activate cells. So comparing to a, a in this, in this uh, way, like a lead, with the lead, you, it's, it's not aggressive. You will never mm. cut tissue, but you are giving energy to the cells. You are photobiome uh, simulating cells. Right. So, you know, it's two <laughs> different things that you are using. Right. I, I'm not a uh, fan of calling ATP38 a laser. For me, mm -hmm. it's the lead. It's a low level lead therapy or something right. like that. Right. Uh, but, you know, no, if you call it laser, you know, for the the market, it's you know, it's it's beautiful. So you know, pay, people they feel attracted. You know, ah, yes, it's a laser, but it's a laser, it's right? Not a laser. It's I have a question for you. Um, if I were doing a lot of endodontic surgery, would you recommend using lasers to clear out the crepes? Yes, absolutely. Way? absolutely. And not only, or not only lasers. Uh, also, I don't know if you use ozone therapy. It's something that no, you use. Or no. Not. No. So, Pigozone. Pigozone, is that what it is? Yes. Ozone, like the gas, also yeah. for antibiotics. O O3, and, um, right? Is that what yeah, it is? O3. Yes. Okay. Uh, I don't use it because I don't, I don't do uh, endodontics now. I do more surgeries with Dr. Miguel. But um, what I can tell is that the first thing we do when we are removing a, a cyst, first of all, is using, you know, the piezo, you know, to clean the mm -hmm. bone and activate the bone. <clears throat> Then secondly, what we use, it's like we clean all the bacteria with the air gag because air gag, it's able to kill the bacteria, but it doesn't ca uh, kill the viruses and fungus. Okay. And you can have those kinds of, you know, uh, living creatures in your uh, bone and, and you don't know. So just in case what we do afterwards, it's applying the ozone. 
because no. the ozone it's a gas that will penetrate uh, through the bone so it will kill uh, all the bacteria viruses and fungus uh, and it's something that you can re if you use it you can guarantee that you're really disinfected it's outrageous it's amazing i think that you know with lasers it's something that it's more local not as ozone because you know ozone it's a gas that will dissipate Right. So I believe that the same thing with endodontics, uh, you can use both. That's Absolutely. amazing. That is, I, mean, I mean, really, it seems logical, right? We used to just open the crypts up and there was mess inside. But that's fascinating. Is Valerie doing this? Does she do this as well? Uh, oh, I know that she uses lasers. I'm she not does. sure if she's using ozone, but... Oh. I believe, yes, absolutely. Like ozone therapy, it's something, you know, uh, you know, doctors at least, well, here in Portugal, no, they, they don't use ozone therapy, but you know, in other countries, for example, in Germany, they yeah. use a lot of ozone therapy. Is that, was that Ed Lynch out of Warwick? Was he one of the first people to start doing it? I know Levi Steyer did it. Uh, there was a gentleman at Warwick. I think it was Ed Lynch that started yeah. doing it. It was, it came oh. to me. It came to Canada for a very brief period of time, yes. but it was perceived of as being holistic. And yes. so I think people went, you know, forget about it kind of thing. I, I also use ozone for combined with PRF. Sometimes like I ozonize the PRF. Really? Uh, because, yes, because <laughs> uh, ozone also gives uh, some power uh, to the cells. Uh, so I also use it and it's also good to, for, for blood disinfection. You know that there's a, um, you know, a blood therapy that uses ozone. So, um, yes, you can, you, you apply ozone to your blood to clean, uh, you know, all the bacteria and, and, and things. That's not chelation and, therapy. No. Yes. And I do, and I, yes, and I do the same with the PRF and, and, and ozone. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not laughing at you. I'm just thinking, my goodness, you've been a contributor to four different book chapters for Quintessence and yeah. you're only 26 years of age. Like it's, it's upsetting me, I can tell you right now. So the PRF for facial aesthetics, which of the PRFs are you using? Is this A-L, all the ones I know, I-A-L? Right now, I'm currently using a Rix uh, machine, the BioPRF. Okay. Uh, <laughs> The thing is that what I was saying is that uh, I use his machine, I use his tubes, um, I use his protocol, but then the way I apply it, it might be, you know, different because for example, I ozonize um, the PRF. I also use um, IVs to improve uh, the patient's blood quality. That it's something that, you know, uh, most of the people they don't do because like I see people that they apply PRF and then they say, ah, but PRF doesn't work. The thing is that, for example, I had a patient, uh, you know, it was my last patient of the day. Uh, she came last week and she had like her face full of acne and she wanted to take uh, Rakuten. It's like a pill, you know, to... Right. That. I'm, I'm not going to give that to you. You're going to do a PRF session and I'm going to inject vitamin C into your vein. And next week you come just for to do the ATP because I do the ATP after PRF treatment to mm -hmm. improve the healing and also on the acne program to kill the bacteria. And then I ask the patients to come the following week just for an observation and also to do the, um, the ATP 38 and to document the case. Of course. <laughs> because I always document the case. Of course. <laughs> and like it's a pretext so they can come and I can take uh, pictures. And Today, like, I look into her face and, you know, all the acne was gone. Right. Like she said, I did, because she comes from London, but she said, like, I did PRP in London. I did PRP in Madrid. And she said, I thought that your treatment would be something similar. Right, right. But then she said, but this treatment really worked. Actually, like, she's, like, grateful that uh, mm. I insisted uh, uh, on her to do this this kind of treatment so I believe that sometimes um, it's not like we cannot say that, that a technique doesn't work we need to apply it in the right way so I believe that PRF it's not only you know the centrifugation protocol the machine but if you improve the blood quality 
of the so right. you can really obtain very good results that's so amazing I, Sorry? That, so i believe that that's why i'm I, i'm successful on the facial treatments it's not because not uh, because of the creams i use or because you know my hand does like a great micro needling I right. think because I work a lot on nutrition and also on improving my my patient's uh, blood results. I think That's amazing. Like, okay, so if Catherine happens to be listening, get together, work yes. on this. You know, version yes. two of facial aesthetics. Yes. This is amazing. So you did some work as well with stem cells. And I brought it up because I saw you did some work with the son. I don't, did you work with him or you just, Well, he was involved I, with Dr. Mangano? Yes, uh, actually, this was a project that I did with uh, uh, Francesco, with uh, Professor Mangano. Mm -hmm. um, Does he allow you to call him Francesco? Is that okay? He says that I should uh, call him Franz. So. Oh, heavens, whoa, all right. <laughs> no, 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 but he's like a very, very hardworking person, like right, all right. the time, like writing articles, working on conferences, you know, working at the clinic, because like, He's a brilliant practitioner too. And yeah. you know, uh, actually his main field is digital dentistry. Okay. And uh, also like he runs uh, like uh, one of, you know, a very important journal there is the BMC. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, he's all the time working. And actually I really like to work with him because he's very methodic. And at the same time, like it's, he tells you the truth all the time and, and if something is wrong he will he's very strict he, he will really tell you so i remember when i first started working uh with him i felt so frustrated because i was not uh getting what he wanted but then at the end like okay. everything flow uh perfectly how do you collaborate not... sorry how do you collaborate with all these people i'm trying to figure this out you're everywhere and anywhere at a given moment in time do you, does he, do you go to his lab or do you do this? How do you set up all the laboratory work? So actually, usually when we do this kind of multi-center collaborations, we decide a center where we do the study mm -hmm. and then we distribute, for example, I do the analysis and write the article. Sometimes I'm the one doing the, the study and others, you know, they, they do the, the part of, of, you know, the materials and methods and, and do the, the statistics and, and write the articles. So this is the way we, we collaborate because sometimes it's difficult to, to get together and, mm -hmm. and do a project together. Yeah. yeah, but now you got Zoom, so it's gonna be so much yeah. easier. Of course, of course. And you're amazing, like incredibly so. So the, the, the obvious last question, as it were, aside from the fact that you're working in Miguel Stanley's White Clinic, which is sort of a gift from the gods, I guess, um, well, not, well, it's, yes. not, it's not, not only, you know, a gift. I, I really need to tell you that, you know, people, they think, uh, well, yes, I'm very lucky to be here, but what I want to tell you is that if you really want something, you really need to work for it. And yes. I, I can tell you that, you know, my life was not roses all the time and pink and, you know, and beautiful. I really had like very hard time. Uh, on the beginning, for me, it was really hard that uh, other, you know, doctors accepted my way of practicing, of, of bringing PRF, yes. uh, of bringing all these uh, different kind of approaches, because, you know, this kind of concepts, it, it's something that it's new, and, and some of them they didn't understand. And I really had to, to work hard uh, until, you know, people understand. And right now I feel like flying because, uh, you know, I, I end up conquering that. And thanks to Miguel's support all the time. Of course, he was n not always easy uh, on me. Uh, he was actually like a very, like a father, you know, like uh, very strict. And, and actually, you know, sometimes, uh, you no, know, I, I, I feel, felt frustrated because I, I was not getting what I wanted. But if you work hard, you end up, uh, achieving it. It's like what I want to, to say is that people that are watching some young dentists that uh, can feel inspired. It's if you work hard, you will achieve it and, and never give up because I can tell like how many times I, I wanted to give up, maybe 20, 100 times. But you know, 
you always need to be focused and and follow what you want and work hard for it because you will end up achieving it never give up it's like my my quote you are, <laughs> my motto yes you're awesome i mean i'm just like i'm honestly i've been quiet because i'm stunned it's like <laughs> it's just unbelievable to have talked to you so the obvious question you're 26 as of june the 20th right yeah so Five years from now or 10 years from now, it's June the 20th, I'm gonna get on the phone. Anna, how are you? Happy birthday. What are you doing? And you're going to tell me that you are doing what? Wow. <laughs> well, that's like a, a difficult question because um, how can I say? I don't have like actually a plan like most of the people they ask me will you have uh, your private practice like I don't want that because I, I really feel comfortable working here at the white clinic uh, I can tell you that I have already had uh, some invitations to work sure. uh, abroad sure. um, <clears throat> I might uh, want to have uh, maybe an international experience soon uh maybe uh work in 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 other country and and also like a spread uh you know the protocol that we have also into other clinics so you know other people can can do the same thing and, and help other patients you know maybe do a phd just because uh it's something that that i want to have in in my cv uh but i'm right now i want to find like a topic that is significant. I don't want to do a PhD just because I, I, I want to have it in my CV. I want to do a PhD and a research on something that will be significant uh, in not only in dentistry, but maybe in, in medicine, you know. I, I'm not going to say that I want to, to earn the Nobel Prize, <laughs> but I want to do something significant, like I want to leave my foot, footprints. <laughs> I don't think the Nobel Prize is exactly out of your grasp. Yes. So the most important question of all, the most important question of all, what do you do for fun? Well, people think that, you know, I, I don't have fun, but well, uh, most of the time I can tell you, yes, I, I spend a lot of time, you know, working. I don't have like too much spread time, but I love going to the beach uh, with my family and my sister and friends on weekends because it's very important that you disconnect sometimes and you have your parasympathetic system active. I'm, so I'm your, okay. your, <laughs> your cells can regenerate. I also love listening to music and dancing because we'll all, it will also activate your parasympathetic system <laughs> and you will be more relaxed and, and, and regenerate. But uh, yes, and also I love traveling and, you know, and traveling usually it's, you know, to visit other clinics and other doctors. And for me, that is having fun. Maybe, you know, people, uh, they like, you know, traveling because they like to, you know, visit other countries, other museums. Well, I also love art. You know, I can tell I love art. I can see but, that. Yeah, uh, that's, why, that's why I... No, this 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 is not me. But I also paint. I love I love yeah. uh, painting too. Yes. But uh, I really enjoy uh, you know being a dentist and learning from other doctors. So usually when I travel, it's to to visit other clinics and and other mentors and and learn more and then you know implement that into my my practice and i found that fun so you are, you are unbelievable you're 26 years of age and you've already lived three lifetimes yes. uh, I, I thank you for doing this catherine if you're paying attention okay the next edition of the book rick if you're paying attention more chapters she needs to come to north america more often yeah. Valerie, let's start talking about endodontics. Let's cut this nonsense out. You come over, you teach. You're amazing, Anna. You're just. But thank you very much for inviting me. Like for me, oh it's my like goodness, a huge honor. I told you already. Like you have been my Netflix during COVID. So well, I know Netflix watching. is good, but you fall asleep watching it yes. too. Anna. I've been watching most of your interviews. They are amazing. All of them. They are inspiring. You are doing like. Uh, a brilliant job like thank you so much for giving your time 
to do this this kind of interview like thank you really listen thank you that's very kind i appreciate that anna i wish you well hopefully covid when it's it's the summer it's going to go away uh, and uh we'll see we'll see i'd love to see you i'd love to meet you and i i hope i can meet you personally one day i like that very much i really want anna okay. thank you for this it was fabulous thank really you. thank you thank you thank you, bye thank bye. you. have a lovely day lovely evening